Yes. <clears throat> right here. See the, what's the title of this book? Okay, change, change the there. Catastrophe. 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 And that is a major component of the whole Grail story is that there was a catastrophe that came over England. And in order to decipher that, we have to know about catastrophe. In yeah, all of its... Know how, they fixed, how they fixed it. How they fixed it. Yeah. <clears throat> they came back with the grail and everything right. was fine again. So what, what did they do? Yeah, well, isn't, yeah. isn't that the mystery? Okay, well, here's where we were kind of leaving off. Remember this now? Is it coming back to you? <laughs> All right. So this is what we got into two weeks ago. And there's a reason why we got into this, because, okay, a couple of things here. There's a catastrophe. There's a huge catastrophe 12,000 years ago. Then there's another catastrophe 5,000 years ago. What happened 5,000 years ago? Burkle Crater. Yeah, something fell into the Indian Ocean, plowed its way through two miles of ocean water and gouged a hole 12 miles wide in the bottom of the Indian Ocean. And this would have created tsunamis that were a minimum of 600 feet in height. Now what's interesting is the dating, the radiocarbon dating on the material in the tsunami deposits puts it precisely with the biblical chronology for Noah's flood. which. You've seen me actually revise my perspective because I believe that all the stories about the floods all were rooted in the end of the Ice Age. Now, since I learned about Burkle Crater, I've, I've become convinced that Plato meant exactly what he said when he reported that the Egyptian priests were, um, were belittling the Greeks because the Greeks only knew about the last flood and the Egyptians knew about at least three of them. And the one of Noah and Deucalion was only the most recent. Well, as it turns out, once again, that's totally consistent with the scientific evidence that there have been these multiple catastrophes. And up until three or four or five years ago, it was believed that the Holocene, the last 10,000 years, had been stable and that there had been no... That, yeah, there was guys who acknowledged, hey, there was apparently a, a climate catastrophe coming out of the Ice Age. And it might have been responsible for the elimination of all the mega mammals. But it's been nice and stable since then. Well. The, the, the illusion of stability of the Holocene has pretty much disappeared in the last three or four or five years. And really within the last two years with the discovery of the giant crater off of the coast of New Zealand and the big crater off the coast of uh, Madagascar, which shows that there have been repeated cosmic events throughout the Holocene as well. Well, if, if an object a mile wide fell into the ocean, what kind of consequences would that have for modern society? If something came out of the cosmic deep and fell into the ocean, moving at, say, 20,000 miles per hour, what consequences would it have for modern society? Well, it, would, it wouldn't cause the extermination of the human race. However, what it would cause is that 5,000 years from now, the, the descendants of the survivors of that event would be looking at 100 years from now or 1,000 years from now being the beginning of history. And we see that the beginning of recorded history is dated at 4,800 to 5,000 years ago with, the, with the, um, the invention of cuneiform writing. And so we say, well, that's when the record began. And before that, there was no real history. It was the Mesolithic, and before that was the Paleolithic. So what I'm getting at, hang on, Don, I'll get, because I don't want to deviate too far afield. What I'm saying is here, to understand the whole business of this Holy Grail, it has to be placed within this context of catastrophe. Because the Holy Grail perhaps represents one of the means by which stability is returned to nature after a catastrophe. So when you look at the dating of the, the early megalithic structures, when do, we, when do they appear? You know, the earliest Stonehenge, the earliest earthworks in North America, the earliest works in, in that we see in South America. We can go all over the planet and we see that roughly 4,500 to 4,800 4, years ago was when we see the first examples, you know, the Old Kingdom in Egypt. When is that? 48, 40, 45, 46, 4,700 years ago. You know, when is the first phase of Stonehenge? You know, 45, 4,600 years ago. So 
what we're seeing here is in the aftermath of a catastrophe, what's the first thing possibly that we see people doing? Well, we see them setting up gigantic stones, building pyramids, building temples. All over the British Isles in the next 500 years, there were thousands of giant stones set up. Well, I don't think that most researchers have not placed these events within the context of these unfolding cosmic catastrophes and what they may do to the balance of terrestrial nature. And it's only, I think, in that context that you can begin to understand what they were attempting to do. And what they were attempting to do was to bring, back, bring about or a, a realignment of, of the natural balances that had been disrupted during these catastrophic events. And the Holy Grail was one way of symbolizing the technological means by which they did this. So you cannot, you cannot even discuss the Holy Grail meaningfully by taking it out of the context of this whole unfolding series of cosmic events that, the, that our planet has been a part of. That's what I'm trying to get at here. The more we understand the catastrophes, the more we're going to understand the technologies that were the response to those catastrophes. The more that we understand what happened to nature and how nature was dislodged from its normal harmonies, only then are we going to be able to understand what the efforts were and what the strategies were for restoring that balance. That's what I'm getting at here. We cannot understand these catastrophes too little. Because it's the central, it's going to be the central issue of our lives, if not our lives, our children's lives, or our grandchildren's for sure. But catastrophe lies in our future. Of that, there is no question whatsoever. Because the laws of physics have not been changed. It's still the same cosmic environment that our ancestors had to face. When they set up those stones, when they built those temples so that they could track celestial motion with a great degree of precision, they were thinking about the future. They were thinking about us. And so we can't just ignore and neglect the fact that these catastrophes have been an ongoing part of the whole story and that everything that's going on now is a response to that.